Hi everyone, what's Turner here today? It's quite sunny today as you can tell, so hence the reason for the hat. Hope you all enjoyed the class value system the other day. Uh, as you can probably tell, my results are not typical. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you two systems which you can use right now to profit. One's a Dutch system and the other one's a straight backing system. So what we're going to do now is head straight over to the computer and let's get started. Hi everyone. Okay, today I'm going to show you how easy it is to find and back winners by using the software compared to normal form reading, i.e. using something like the Racing Post. I think it's important here that you don't become too overwhelmed when you're actually trolling through form. If you spot a trend, follow it. Don't keep second guessing yourself or become convinced on something which simply isn't there. So today I'm concentrating on handicap races. As you can see, I've got the software open in front of me now. Some top two selections, you might find that they're actually in the top of the betting market. However, this doesn't mean that every single race is, and you will obviously get some big price winners in there also. As we already know, the software produces a great number of top two selections, winning selections. So, what better place to start than here? As you can see in front of me now, although there's only four horses in this race, which we'll get to later when I show you the race in post, um, it is quite actually a tough contest. Now there's only four horses in this race. Now I think the most important thing to realise here is that yes okay fine there's only four horses so we must be able to get a winner from this. However what you'll normally find is within any single horse race there's usually three to four horses which have a really decent chance of winning this race. Okay so most of them are either just making up the numbers. Um, every once in a while, yes, you do get a big price winner which comes home and surprises everybody and all the form reading in the world, you still would never have selected that horse. It does happen. However, 90% of the time, you'll find that there's two really decent horses in there and maybe one other potential danger, sometimes two. So, as we can see here, top rated horse in the software is this one here which is uh, Fransiken. The next one below him is Hot Spice. So all you would need to do, open the software, go straight to this race, say okay these are the top two rated horses and then head over to Betfair and we'll see what prices these horses are trading at and we'll go from there. Okay so as you can see Hot Spice is actually the top horse on the market and the other horse, Fransikin, is actually third. £10 bet on both of these will return what you can see on the screen there now. So what I'm going to do is actually head back over to the racing post and I'm just going to run through a little bit about the form reading side of things on there just so you can see the difference between that and the software and then we'll come back and catch up with this race. Okay, so you've seen with the software how easy it is to actually just open a race and look for the top two rated horses. Obviously the software calculates everything for you. The old fashioned way to do it is to actually go to the racing post. You can then obviously click on any horse and it will give you all the horses history. But then what you'll need to do is actually manually go through all the history for each particular horse and find out if it has one at the course, the distance, the class, is it running the same race type, is it coming up or down in trip, has it stepped back in class, all these type of things which form reading involves. Obviously with the software that's all done for you so basically what we do is we calculate everything and then we just provide you with a simple ratings. From there you can then look into those ratings deeper if you wish you can use your own particular methods if you have other ways which you're looking and selecting horses you can use that cross-reference it against the software or vice versa so as you can see all I'm doing here is just having a look down quickly going through the horses history like I say with the racing post obviously it's going to take you a lot longer to do the information is there if you're willing to put the time and effort in however you did see how easily that I just quickly went to the software straight away I know that the top two selections and the top two rated horses 
have got a better chance of winning any particular handicap or non-handicap race. So all you need to do is then select those particular races for the day and then zone in on the best possible races and the best selections within those races. Okay, so if we're just going through the racing post, what I've done is I've grabbed some screenshots just so it's easy for you all to see. So 410 at Leicester, as we know there's only four horses in the race. However, first place you need to start is here. If there's obviously more runners in the race, then what I would still see is you really want to be concentrating on the first four horses in the bend. What I would say is use all the data which you have available, whether that's from the racing post or whatever website you decide to use. Obviously it'll take you a lot longer to go through the form of each horse. With this race we know there's only the four runners, so it's actually a good example to use. If you look down there at the verdict, you can see that even though there's only four runners, it says that they all need to be taken seriously. The step up to this trip clearly suited Hot Spice when winning over course and distance four weeks ago and he gets the nod over Franciscan. So if we look a little bit deeper into this race, another thing you can do is actually use the favourite stats. So as we know here, it's a three year old race, it's a handicap. And the winning percentage for favourites in this race is actually 41%, which is above average. If you don't decide to use a racing post, another site I would recommend would be Sporting Life. As you can see here on the first part of the card, they actually give you a breakdown and they give you the verdict and they also give you form watch as well. So you can have a read through there, note down any positives, any negatives to do with the horses. What you're trying to do is obviously build up a picture in your mind of the runners within the race and the best runners within that race at the same time. Okay, so the first horse we have here, Franciscan. And as you can see, first thing I would suggest that you do check is to make sure the horse has plenty of runs under its belt. As you can see here, it's got plenty of races. We can't really judge any horse which has got, I would say, less than eight races. So just be careful when looking at horses like that. If we have a close look at his form and his stats, we can see that for the course, he's won at this course. Distance, he's won at today's distance as well. And if we look at the going, we can see he's had three wins on the going as well, which is good to firm. If we look at the next one, Quiz Mistress, we can see here quite a few races as well. If we dig a little deeper, we can actually see though that no wins at the course, no wins at the distance, and nothing at the going either. Although it does have a few places there. If we look at the next one, Hot Spice, again. Plenty of races there. If we look at the course stats, we can see he's one of the course. Another win at the distance. And two wins at the going. So again, just building up in your own mind a little bit more information about this particular horse. If we look at the next one, we can see straight away it's only had four races. So not really enough to give us a decent indication on how well the horse may perform. Obviously what you're doing is you're looking at the past data which you have for each horse. And as you can see there, course and distance, there's nothing to go on. So we can't really score this horse. So that's the 410 at Leicester. Obviously Hot Spice is our selection. And Franciscan is the other selection. So obviously to pick those two horses out using the racing post, you need to go through like I've just showed you, read through all the horses' form, decide which one's got more positives and negatives than the other horses. Obviously with that race it was quite easy because it was only the four runners. So we go straight through all of those and see obviously who'd won at the course, distance and ground conditions as well. These two horses just stood out. 
When we looked at the ratings before within the FL Horse Racing software, obviously they were both top rated, so that's what you'd be looking at straight away. And then from there you could quickly have a look at the other two horses, see how they were competition wise. Okay, so let's just go and check out the race and see how they get on. One more to go in uh, for this one and a half mile handicap at Leicester, which will be Hot Spice at 3.25, who has now rested favouritism from one mile. Let's go live to Leicester. Moir goes and gets the early lead in this mile and a half handicap. It's Armoir and Tom Queeley by a length. To Hot Spice, Ted Durkin racing in second. And now Quiz Mistress has pulled her way through between horses. And she's now coming right through to try and press Armoir as they go through the first quarter mile. With Franciscan now settled towards the rear of the field. As they completed their first quarter mile... Quiz Mistress has won the battle with Cathy Gannon to now move on and get the lead and has already put two lengths between herself and Armoire now racing in second, Hot Spice in third and weighted with at the back of the field is Franciscan going for a fourth win of the year. So down the hill now on towards the final mile and a furlong and it's Quiz Mistress and Cathy Gannon clear now by three lengths. Armoire, Tom Queeley racing in second, Hot Spice and Ted Durkin in third, and Kieran Fallon looking for his second win of the afternoon, Franciscan at the back of the field, as Quiz Mistress now takes them up the hill towards the far turn, and on now towards the final three quarters of a mile, and the lead extends to four lengths, to Armoire racing in second, a further length and a half, to Hot Spice in third, and still another length back to Franciscan as they take the turn. Quiz Mistress clear. Of Armoire, the Yarmouth winner in second, and then Hot Spice, already a course and distance winner here at Leicester in third. Franciscan still at the back of the pack, and now racing a good six lengths off the Philly Quiz Mistress as they the run downhill inside the final five furlongs of the corner handicap. And Quiz Mistress and Cathy Gannon extend the lead once more to nearly five lengths to Armoire in second, Hot Spice in third, and Franciscan in fourth as in Indian file they make the run slightly downhill again and on inside the final half mile. And Quiz mistress second on our last couple of starts still has a split of three lengths over armoire in second and the rest now are just beginning to be nudged along to try and close franciscan at the back of the pack that is now being ridden along by kieran fallon and they've got two and a half furlongs to go and quiz mistress now holds on to a lead of a couple of lengths hot spice down the outside the yellow cap is armoire and then fallon now on the inside on franciscan as they now bunch up inside the final quarter mile and it is now franciscan who has burst through and has got the lead to Quiz Mistress to the inside on the outside Hot Spice Armoire has got little more to give down inside the final furlong Franciscan's out in front Hot Spice is having another go down the outside but Franciscan is finding more for a determined Fallon and on the drive to the line it's Franciscan who's going to win four wins for the year for Franciscan and two vitally on the day for Kieran Fallon Hot Spice was second Quiz Mistress in third Armoire was fourth Jockey's Championship ain't over until Martin Kelly sings, and you don't want to hear that. Franciscan, a double for Kieran Fallon, really gained 4.10. Um, Martin was saying in running in the final furlong that Hot Spice looked a little bit green and has this hugely wayward action, legs splaying everywhere. Um, but uh, didn't stop uh, him running on, but he just wasn't good enough for the weight, receiving four pounds from Franciscan, who's been kept busy this year by Luke Kumani. Uh, but... Okay, so as you can see there, Franciscan came in first, Hot Spice was second, and the other two bringing up the rear. So what I'm going to do now is show you another example. Okay, so what you can see in front of you now is the software. And what we're going to do, we're going to check out this race. Again, we're looking to touch the top two rated selections. Now, there's 14 runners in this race. And as you can see, it's quite interesting the way it's been split. And what I mean by that is that all these horses down to here have some form. The rest of them, the bottom half of the field, have little, if none at all. So, like I say, we're going to concentrate on these selections here. And what I want to do in these videos is actually show you a more flexible approach to the selection making process. So you can then go away and use it within your own betting. Now, the one we're looking at here is Reflection. The next one's Lethal. However, we will need to check out Tenancy and this one here, Greek Secret. And as you can see by the prices, we've got some decent prices here with these horses. Horses that probably within the betting market you 
you wouldn't even notice. Now at this point I don't really want you to get too confused with all the numbers within the software. Obviously these are all part of the filter system which we use to make up the final total and the final ratings here. Now once you obviously understand these then it will give you a greater insight into the race itself and how we actually go ahead and work out the totals. But for now I don't really want you to get too bogged down with that. So for this particular method what we're doing is we're simply using the ratings tools here. So you go through the software, stick to handicap or non-handicap races, narrow down on the selections and the races with the best tools and races similar to this where you can see that there's a huge split. A lot of these horses here are obviously making up the field. We know the top two rated selections within the software produce a great number of winners so it's a great place to start. So from the starting point here we can build up a clear picture of all the horses within the race and the ones which have the best chance of winning. So what you would do next by using the software is check out these horses in a little bit more detail. You do that by clicking on the detail button. Then what happens is we bring up all the horses history here. So then you can quickly go through check this out and add more positives or negatives to the particular horse itself. You can also then just flick down and see the other horses there as well. Another thing you can do is actually click on this button here which is the overview menu. What this actually does is breaks down all the figures and gives you a percentage. So as you can see here the top horses in the ratings which we're looking at as you can see they've all got a decent amount of numbers next to every single filter here distance winning percentage distance place percentage if you look further down at the other ones in the betting who had very little form you can see that there's a lot of zeros so this obviously helps again for you to not only start to build up a picture but to zone in and concentrate on the horses which really matter within this race. So now for me, from what I've seen straight away from this race is that we have four possible selections. We know that we're already trying to dutch the top two rated selections. But when I say dutch, what I mean is as long as they're a decent price, you just simply back both these selections. So if we're looking at Fleshy On and Lethal, we also now need to make sure the tendency here and Greek Secret pose no threat to these two selections. If they do, or we see more positives for these horses, then it's certainly worth including them in the selection process and placing a bet on these horses as well, just as cover. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to switch over to PowerPoint and we're going to run through some form reading using the racing post. What you will find is that the more you actually practice and look at races in this particular manner, and actually break them down that you will get better at doing this and you'll be actually quite surprised how many times you can actually pick the winner out of the race whether or not you start with two selections three or four you'll tend to find that the winner is coming from that group if you go through and form read correctly so what I'm trying to show you and tell you is that it's okay not to be 100% about your selection you don't need to be but you do need to break the races down and really look at who has a decent chance within the race and who simply doesn't. Now if you can do this within handicap races, obviously the competition is usually more competitive, then you'll definitely be in a stronger position to actually form read other types of races, zone in on the particular selections, you've got a better chance. Okay, so let's head over to the racing post now. Okay, so here we are at the racing post. Again, check out the card. As we can see, the flesh on here is actually sitting as favourite. It's actually no surprise with that seeing as he's a top rated horse. Click on his stats, go through all the form here, match everything back to the race type, the ground conditions, class, etc. And again, work your way through the rest of the horses here. So what we're going to do just to make this easier is just switch to PowerPoint. Okay, so we'll now just have a look at the 550 at Southern. 
we're using the racing post for this so we're just going to fire through the card and see what we find we're looking at the form of obviously the three horses which we spotted earlier first one here with fleshy on tenancy letal so we did notice that the top two within the FL software and we also noticed the other possible horse there as well so we're going to check him out if we look at the first one we can see that at the distance he's won he's actually came second twice as well and obviously he's won at the course so we can see there straight away there's three positives so the track shouldn't be a problem for him He's actually had some good place figures there as well, as you can see. So, very strong on this ground. If we check out the second horse, we can see he's also won here as well. And he's got plenty of all weather experience, seven wins. If we move through now, six on standard. And he's also one of the class as well, so that shouldn't be a problem for him. He's obviously one in higher classes as well. We move on to the next horse. Again, all you're trying to do is build up positives and negatives where possible. Don't look for anything which isn't there. Just stick to the facts. Check out the horse's history and make your decisions from there. Obviously, we're looking for top two rated horses, really. Um, but from what I've seen so far... The first two were definitely fine. Now we just want to check him, this one out here. As we can see, Southall. He's had three wins there. Distance, two wins at the distance. He's had some second places as well. So from what I've seen, just having a look through the form of these horses, and obviously by checking out the FL ratings first, that there is three possibilities here. So it would be silly to actually, you know, just pick one horse from here. We know which is top rated. We know the other two are really close as well. So what I'm going to do is decide, back all three of these horses. We'll head over to Betfair, check out the prices. Um, there might be some decent prices on two of these horses. And we'll see how they get on in the race. Like I said before... You're looking for two selections, but if there is a third danger, just back the horse. There's no point leaving it out just to see it coming in. So we'll go with that, and we'll see how they get on. Can you believe it? National Hunt Racing rules the roost on October the 4th. It won't be too long, actually, before we have our first meeting with Cheltenham as well, uh, 14th and 15th. Uh, Alex Steeman will be in the studio alongside the one and only Dan Barber, who's uh, time form preview for Ludlow. You'll shortly be able to hear and download timeform.com forward slash radio. Racing at Toaster and Ludlow, and complemented by racing on the flat at Nottingham. I think it's a hugely elongated card at Nottingham for tomorrow afternoon as well. An eight race bonanza, two o'clock through to five thirty. Well, there's some people that wouldn't call it a bonanza, no, but there are other people that would. I, I much prefer likes of uh, Ascot last Friday. Six races, 35 minutes apart. You can get your head around it. You can do plenty of homework on it. You're not stretched by too many runners, too many races. Just a nice, manageable size. Six races at Catrick only today as well, which was a shock when I was writing down the races for Catrick, Sutherland and Leicester. You very rarely get a six-race card at all anywhere during the week, which is uh, very interesting. We're fleshy only 3.9. The odds begin to load up now a little bit quicker. Fluctuation 5.2, 13 uh, Gala Spirit. Good money for this stylist to kill at 11 and a half now, having been twice the price this morning. Gala Spirit 13, 16 and a half Dotty Darrick, and 19 and a half Sophie's Baron, 23 to 1 uh, bar those. As is the fix, um, Southall for today. Uh, very much going to be behind time. I don't know what it is, but they put these cotton horses. In first, <laughs> just totally surprising what's going on. Oh dear, dear, dear! Come on, 
what's happening? 3.9 now, Refresioni, so he's on uh, the drift. I don't know who this is going in with the red blinkers. I've got a feeling uh, it is, is it from Pellier. No, it's not uh, eye to eye shoe, is it, rather blinkers? Because it could be cut the cackle. And he's got red on the, uh, the jacket. Yeah, so it's cut the cackle, isn't it? Which you guessed to. He's had a number of runners that have been back today, uh, but hasn't really hit the mark. I wonder if it's going to be a cut the cackle, who is a big price today on 4 at 40. But doesn't want to know. Doesn't even want to go forward as well. Hmm. Uh, right. Let's see what other horses have been back to this race. Got the spirit is fairly strong in the market here, Martin. Um, uh, for Peter Niven and Tony Hamilton, Peter doesn't have many horses on the flat, does he? No, and we're talking about draws before as well. But you want to be really towards the middle or towards the inside. This horse drawn quite nicely. Had its first start for the stable at Kempton just 24 days ago. That was over the mile, and you get the feeling that was just a race to set this horse up for later in the season, and is dropping back down to a much more suitable six furlongs. Okay, they are going in very, very slowly here. The time form uh, review comes your way after this race. We'll have a look at two races at Leicester, 3.40 and 4.10. And, of course, the big racing stories of the day in the company uh, with Martin Kelly. And a little bit of a bonus as far as the uh, time form global podcast is concerned. If you've never heard it before, we'll give you a wee smidge, you know, a taster. Uh, well, not an hors d'oeuvre, but uh, an aperitif. Yeah, uh, yeah. There, there is a, a definite word that I can't think of either. No, I can't. Sophie's bow looks like being one of the last in. And Reflessio, can he double up after landing that huge jam? But he's a big drifter, though. He's now on the mark of 4.1, and the money has come for fluctuation on 5.4 for Ian Williams. God, the, so I haven't really hit the heights of the season as much as they did last season um, on the flat. He's slowly changing around his yard to get more dual-purpose horses in. But he is uh, a remarkable trainer. Drum Pellier is the penultimate horse in. And the young Paul Picard. And I think there's just the one more to go in. Is he right or is he wrong? Probably two more to go in now, my luck. And it will be the gambled on fluctuation. And uh, another really promising young jockey, uh, Ryan Clark. Could be that. Could it be him? Could it be Full house? Don't be stupid. There's one more out the back. Of course there is. Of course, William Beach is the last one to go in. And I think they're just about ready. Now just Dotty Derrick to go in. To complete the lineup. Waiting on. Dotty Darrick to step forward. For the 32redbet.com handicap. Dotty Darrick is almost in. One final shaft should do it. In she goes. All in. They're off for the 32redbet.com handicap. Okay, Slope so here we are at the racing post. Also, stylistic hill just squeeze again. Out check out the cord as we can see. The flesh on here is actually sitting as favorite. It's actually no surprise with that. Seeing as he's a top rated horse, click on his stats, go through all the form here, match everything back to the race type, ground conditions, class, etc. It is Tenancy who leads up to Lethal in second, Drumpelier in third. Outwider improving his fluctuation, the green jacket, red sleeves, the blue and red of And again, Spirit, work your way right through the rest of the horses here. So what we're going to do just to make this easier is just switch to PowerPoint. Further back to find Porth Grid and Beach is under pressure with Dotty Derrick. And right out the back is Needwood Park and cut the tackles one from last. Just over two furlongs to go. Down the centre, Tenancy. Far side, Reflessioni. Near side, Fluctuation is coming home well. A furlong and a half to go. Tenancy now pressed by Lethal, who's running on fairly strongly also with the cheap pieces. And how Reflessioni is burst to the front on the far side. And Reflessioni takes over and goes on to Lethal in second. Entering the final half. And it's Reflessioni driven clear here by Luke Morris to win for Ron Harris. Back-to-back -back wins for Reflessioni. To Lethal in second, home in third, Tenancy, and Stylistic Hill was fourth, and they were clear of fluctuation. And then Greek Secret from Dotty Darrett cut the cackle, Negra Park stayed on ahead of Gala Spirit, and then came Drum Pellier, further back, Porth Gwyn and Beach, and also...
also in rear was the overall bat marker, who was Sophie's bow. Uh, consistency has never been his byword, but Reflessi only has double up in the space of four days at a bet for SP of 4.14. Okay, so if we just check out the result now, we can see Reflessi only came first. Lethal was the other horse we looked at, came second, and Tenancy came in third. You couldn't actually see Tenancy on the video because he was actually the last horse in the betting. So as you can see, what you could have done with the ratings as well is you could have possibly used the higher price horses and had a place bet on those as well, which obviously would have produced another return. So there you go. I'm sure you can all see the potential within the selections and the ratings themselves. Top one, two and three finish. All I want to do next is show you today's handicap race results, which I could have used for today's examples, October the 4th, 2011. All of these races qualified for the top two, three rated selection process. These results are typical as to what you can expect to find on a daily basis using the FL software. First one we had was Leicester, 240. And the winner there, me and my shadow, returned at 6 to 1. After that, we had a couple of losses. The next winner we had was the 410. Franciscan, who returned at 11 to 4, and we used that one in the video example. Following that, we had a loss. Then at Southall at 450, we had another winner, Il Batista, who returned at 7 to 2. We had a loss after that, and then the last two races of the day which qualified, we had two winning selections. The first one was Eastern Hills at 14 to 1, and the second one was Fleshion at 11 to 4. As you can see from the examples I've shown you today, and the results here, I'm not trying to cover over or hide anything from you. These types of selections are produced daily within the FL software, and I've shown you how easy they are to find. However, I am only using the software as an example. You can find these selections and use these techniques using the Racing Post, Sporting Life, GG.com, and the other free resources out there. All it takes is a little planning and some execution. These are the kind of techniques that work day in and day out, I hope you've enjoyed the video series so far. If you have any questions or comments, then please leave them below. I will try to answer them all. I really appreciate the feedback, and I'm kind of sad that these are going to be the last videos from me, because I enjoy the teaching side of things, and I've also enjoyed making the videos for you. Now, if you've missed the 61-page Platinum Racing Strategies PDF, then please make sure you download it, because it will help you put these two videos and three techniques into perspective. You can grab it by clicking the video one, to the right of this video. Now I'm certainly not only leaving it there, no. In the next video we're going to go into a little mindset and strategy and how to focus and get the best out of your efforts and yourself. This is vitally important so you won't want to miss it, tying all the pieces together. So once again thanks for watching and I'll see you in a few days time.